All right, well, Canada is moving up the ranks in terms of EV readiness, but make it then transition to all electric. It can still be a little bit daunting. So to help consumers adjust to the electric shift as more hybrids or more automakers are introducing hybrids and plug-in hybrids to the market, Petrina Gentile from the Global Mail Auto Journalist joins us live this morning here in the parking lot. You've brought another array of vehicles that are going to charge us up, I suppose, Petrina. Exactly. But let's talk first of all about Canada moving up in the market in terms of our ranking, in terms of EV readiness, et cetera, et cetera. What's going on here? Why are we moving up so rapidly? Well, we're, we're moving up for a number of reasons. One is the supply is definitely improving because, you know, as you know, the automakers are coming off a couple of difficult years, yes. COVID, um, supply issues, even the BC port strike. Uh, but you're seeing that supply improving. Inventories are improving gradually and demand is also yeah. going up for electric vehicles so as well. Tell us about this Toyota Prius that you brought in because a lot of people associate the Prius, of course, with EV plug-ins. Exactly. Yeah. And yeah. the Prius is really the one that um, made hybrids, you know, recognizable. So this is the world's, what's the world's first um, hybrid vehicle that was yep. mass produced. And back in, you know, 2001, it was pretty, you know, love it or hate it design. Right, right, yep. Now it's, it's completely different. All redone for 2023. Nice styling on it. It's lower. Uh, it also is longer and wider. It has a plug-in. So that's here. where you plug in. Right. right so okay. this is basically, you plug it in, it'll take you about 11 hours. It has more range than the last version. So you're you're looking at about 70 kilometers of electric range. And once you're done with that electric power, then all you have to do is basically nothing. The, the gas engine takes over right, yeah. and you don't have to worry about having range anxiety running out of yeah. uh, um, electricity because you just fill it up at a gas station. And a quick question, is, is, are the tanks the same size as a, as a car tank or is it smaller because so much of it is more on the hybrid, uh, the, the, the electric side? They're a little bit smaller. A little yeah, bit smaller. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's move on here. And while we're sort of talking about that, you know, what are some of the benefits of driving like a plug-in hybrid instead of maybe making that full commitment going full EV? Well, one is the fuel economy savings because mm -hmm. you'll definitely get that. You're going to fill up less. Yep. Um, and also you don't have that range anxiety because you so are plugging the key, it what in. You're me. Yeah. And that really helps with uh, the range anxiety. Because yeah. with an all-electric vehicle, you know, the range is usually 300 kilometers or to 500 kilometers, so it is kind of limited. So what is this vehicle here? This is the Kia Nero, yeah. and this is all new for 2023. Um, and it also has a lot more range about 55 kilometers of range uh, new interior the materials inside so these seats are actually made out of um, eucalyptus leaves. Really? Yeah. So it's not leather, even yeah. though it has a leather feel. Yeah. yeah. And also the headliner here, this is made out of recycled plastic uh, water bottles. Wow. So this is a big trend that we're going to see moving forward so with electric vehicles. even more environmental, right? Even exactly. more reuse, reusing, et cetera, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what are we talking, like price point on a Kia, for example? This one starts around 38000 mm -hmm. It also comes in a conventional hybrid, which you would not plug in, mm. and an electric vehicle as well, which costs a lot more. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, this this looks really great, and I love the display as well. Yeah, it's so let's neat. move on here because you know before the break we were, you know, I was kind of pretending to be actually asleep. So you know, if you want to, want to maybe do a <laughs> camping trip or whatever, wh what's this vehicle? What's what's the story behind this? This is the Mitsubishi Outlander. It's again all new for 2023, so yeah. it gets more range, about 60 kilometers of range. But we have this one-off model here that has a bunch of accessories on it. As you know, yeah. you you were up there in the uh, the tent up here, and then over here. This is really designed to be a weekend camper. Right. So I can pull this out. You have a cutting board, a little sink. No kidding. Oh, look at that. Yeah. A, a, a little stove you can fire stove, up. A stove, a fridge. Oh, that's a fridge. That's okay. A fridge. I, I thought this was a really complicated <laughs> coffee maker. Yeah, and then a yeah. coffee for you as well. I Amazing. think we just have like maybe tea this morning yeah. for you. But it's uh, it's nice because it it proves that you know plug-in hybrids. You can do other things with it. You can yeah. take it camping. Um, you can take it uh, like off-roading slightly. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is a three-road SUV, which we don't see a lot of in that plug-in hybrid electric version. So even with all of what we're looking at here, there's still three rows of seating available. Now it's two. But now it's two. <laughs> we're okay. using it with that. But right, it's right. a, a three-road. Okay. Um, that's SUV. fascinating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and how quickly does this tent sort of pop up and be available to sort of crash? You know what? It didn't take long. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys here put it up probably yeah. in about 10 or 15 minutes yeah. by himself. So it is something that's uh, easy to do. Uh, no. But it does add to the price. All the accessories about $10,000. The base price on the Outlander is about forty six. dollars um, And this vehicle is an upper, upper right. level model around fifty. dollars And I just noticed this. We hadn't actually walked around before. There's also sort of, I guess, the sort of protected screen here right. as well to give an you some awning. shelter too. Yeah, an awning. Yeah. So everything you want for a camping, yeah. <laughs> it's all here. That's 
pretty amazing. <laughs> Cheaper than an RV and mm -hmm. uh, more, more fuel efficient. And, and when you talk about the infrastructure situations, that range anxiety, that we, you know, they're, they're, that, that seems to be the thing that's holding some people back here. What's, what's improving about that, whether it's Ontario or Canada-wide? Well, we are seeing um, more manufacturers coming together. So we have seven manufacturers that are coming together. They're helping to build a supercharging network across North America. It's still a couple of years away, but mm -hmm. that's going to help because those yeah. superchargers can help you charge fast, under 20 minutes. And we don't have a lot of those charging stations right. okay. across Canada. Katrina so Gentile, we always appreciate the time. Thanks for bringing in yet another fleet of really interesting vehicles. It's wild to see how things are changing so quickly here. Oh, look at that here. beauty of a book. Cooking cousins Jillian Harris and Tori Wesser are back with a brand new cookbook, Fresh Food, Fuller Hearts, that contains many favorite childhood meals, a reimagined for today's busy families and foodies. So Jillian and Tori, welcome back to CV24 Breakfast. Thank you. And Thank you totally you. nailed the book. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so this is the newest cookbook after the one you did four years ago, yeah. uh, Fresh Food, Full Hearts. Yeah. So uh, I love that you've catered this one for busy families. Yes. It's got a plant-based approach, but talk about how, you know, you incorporated your childhood memories to be inspiration for this one. Yeah, I don't know why I'm feeling a little teary-eyed this morning. We just <laughs> we just got some good news about the book and its rankings, so that's going to wow. launch us today. But, you know, we got the second book offer right at the beginning of COVID, of course, when all of us were thinking about sort of those good old days and, and um, things that brought us back to our roots. And so, so many of these recipes are exactly that, but with a little bit of a healthy spin, you know, it is so important for us to put a meal on the table and connect with our families and whatnot, but we just don't have the same amount of time as we used to. So yeah. um, not only that, the book is so adaptable for those that have mm -hmm. dietary restrictions. I've gone through being plant-based, not plant-based. We have somebody in our family who's celiac. My husband is pescatarian. So wow. we actually recipe tested all these different variations. So if it says that there's a gluten-free option, there is a gluten-free option and we've tested it. Mm -hmm. So we really love that about the book as well. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. Okay. And Tori, and I love just flipping through it. I mean, it's a beautiful book. If you if you follow Tori and Jillian on Instagram, you'll see that it really translates into the cookbook Thank with you. just how beautiful it is. Um, and Tori, you dedicated this book to your mom's. Yeah. It was very special. So what's it like working with your cousin again? Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. We have so much fun, uh -huh. honestly. And yeah, the, the whole family element, we were very inspired growing up with our moms in the kitchen. They passed down so many recipes that are near mm. and dear to our hearts. As so we took a lot of that and, and threw it into the cookbook, also with the lens of like busy people like right. everyone's lives are so busy these days how do we give people time back but still allow them to sit around the family table mm -hmm. and connect over like yeah. great food and not just order takeout food exactly. but like bond over good delicious food so let's, exactly let's get into the yes. food because uh i'm smelling this and loving it i <laughs> yeah. can't wait to take uh, take a bite this is the uh baked tomato heirloom pie yes and so this is actually so it looks so fussy but it's really not this okay. is just a, a store about uh pastry, puff pastry. You keep it in your freezer the night before, a couple hours prior. You bring it out, you roll it out. Mm -hmm. um, you got a little bit of goat cheese, a little Ooh. bit of pesto. This time of year, the tomatoes are showing off. You know, so you get these beautiful heirloom yeah. tomatoes, yellow and green and red. Oh, you're going to have a bite. I'm yes. going to try to. I, I don't care if I look ugly. I yeah, will, no, me too. I am ugly eat way. for any good me food. Me too, 100%. Like, ah. um, with a little bit, of, I'm going to have yeah. some too after mm. I stop talking. Oh my gosh. Um, topped with a little bit of Asiago or Parm. Um, again, like all these are really adaptable. First thing in the morning, you can actually mm. make this as a breakfast pie as wow. well and serve a poached egg on there. Oh my goodness. Um, it's a really beautiful piece. Yeah, I love the colors of the yeah. heirloom tomatoes. You have the yellow, the orange, and that exactly. cheese. Mm. Yeah. It's like a healthy pizza. Exactly. And yeah. if you are plant-based, there's some amazing plant-based goat cheeses out there as well. So this mm. is like a really adaptable recipe for mm. sure. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm talking with my it's mouth full. No, amazing. that's good. No. Amazing. But it's absolutely delicious. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Hi, right, Tori. Let's move on to this one. This is like a healthy kind of apple pie. Yeah, so this <laughs> throws us right back to our childhood. Yeah. Jillian has fond memories of like taking these apples and, and having baked apples for dessert. It's really easy. It's like a healthier yeah. twist on a dessert. Take the apples, core them, this kind of granola mixture that gets mm. baked into them. Okay. It's, it makes your house smell amazing. <laughs> and then we can, we have uh, ice cream for breakfast. Why not, you know? Yeah, exactly. And there's this caramel sauce that you can drizzle on. Mm. And I double dare you to take a bite oh, of this one. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Anything with ice cream, ice right? cream on top of anything. 
anything. Yeah, like know. goat cheese makes yes. it taste better. You know what the cool thing about this too? And we did this with a lot of the recipes uh -huh. is that you could take a leftover apple, you know, yeah. throw it in the fridge if you don't, if, right. if they don't disappear, yeah. and you could blend it up with some milk. And honestly, it makes for the best smoothie in Whoa. the world. Oh, so I just bet. a little hack. We really are, are big fans of like no waste yeah. and trying to make. Can I drizzle these? You ones can do whatever you want. You can put that oh, on everything. Okay. Yes. Yeah. The drizzle makes it all like fancy and it like, does. like ooh, I know. me a moussey bushy. Like, yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that is oh. awesome. Oh my goodness. Okay, and from your cookbook, because you each have kids, two each, and yeah. your your boys are like best friends. Yeah, they are best yeah. friends. What yeah. recipe do they love the most out of your cookbook? Well, oh, so funny. Our yeah. kids love like seafood. I actually, there's one that's called the um, seafood chowder, right? Yes. The seafood chowder. Okay. Um, I make it all the time. It is so easy. It is dairy free, and our kids literally like will mm. ask for seconds, thirds. Okay. I would say that's their favorite of this new book. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna be looking for that seafood yeah. recipe. But the book is out today, right? The book is out today. Okay. Yeah. Jillian, Tori, thank you so much for being with us. Congrats on this amazing book. Thank you. Thank you so much. You. Can't wait to try all the food in it. Arkells have been one of the most active bands in music lately, releasing three albums in as many years, and the latest, Laundry Pile, well, it evolved from a collection of acoustic songs. Yes, a very chill, serene, mm -hmm. folk songy vibe. So joining us now in the studios is Arkells frontman and lead singer, Max Kerman. Max, great to see you. I love the tide. It fits Thank in you. with the Laundry Pile <laughs> theme. Uh, so let's talk about this album, because uh, <laughs> you say it kind of just happened, kind of like, you know, your laundry. It just kind of accumulates and you're like, whoa, what a surprise. I didn't know I had so much. Can I just say yeah. to the viewers out there, <laughs> I know this seems like a very buttoned up show and everyone's yeah. taking this very professionally, right. but you just said the craziest thing I've ever heard. Uh, that, 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 that was- uh, I want to keep my job, it's my birthday. Yeah, no, no, okay, okay but uh, for our viewers, it's not all yeah. what it looks like. It's not all, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Sorry, what was your question? Yeah, yeah laundry pile. Laundry just, pile. Where'd you come up with all this? Yeah. Right? Oh, um, we weren't, <laughs> we weren't expecting to make an album, to be honest. Right. And then uh, we got together in January, uh -huh. and we found this beautiful space in the neighborhood where I live in Toronto, and uh, the band was just hanging out and working very kind of slowly and deliberately, but mm -hmm. no agenda, no timeline. Mm -hmm. But then by the time we got to February, we're like, oh, we have an, a brand new album. Um, and the songs are very kind of raw and intimate, and the minute that it felt like it was getting into a big production, we wanted to strip it right back to mm. sort of like original form. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's, that's uh, how we came into this record, because we weren't really <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> thinking about right. making a new record, but, right. but here we are. But yeah. why the name Laundry Pile? Oh, Laundry Pile. Yeah. Um, well, I like a Laundry Pile, because sometimes you, you're looking at it and you're like, is yeah. this the clean laundry? The is dirty? it the dirty laundry? Oh. You kind of have to smell it. There's some unmentionables <laughs> in there. You have to, you know what I mean? It's sort of, yeah. it's, you, it's, it's an intimate There's thing stains, around the house. Yeah. Or it's clean and fluffy. Yeah, with, you don't know. Downy you and, yeah. 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 So yeah, let's <laughs> though, I'm going to try to keep this clean. We're yeah. going to go back to the creative process a little yeah. bit here. We had Ed Robertson sitting right where you were. Uh, yeah. Yesterday, mm -hmm. talking about how he wrote eight songs in like a day yeah. uh, last year, and suddenly Bare Naked Ladies had a new album. What about your process in terms of, you know, like you said, you weren't really trying to or mm -hmm. trying to accomplish mm -hmm. that. It just kind of happens. How sort of just gen or not generic, but organic mm -hmm. is it? Is the word I was looking for? Yeah, I, I think you know we have enough songs in our catalog right now that it wasn't like we were like trying to write something new. But in the fall, I had a bunch of kind of. Sad demos hanging around, and then I sad demos. <laughs> and then I showed the, the guys in the bandit, and they're like, "Let's get to work on these." So um, yeah, all, most of the songs were written in the fall, and then we kind of recorded them from January to March, and we we're off to, off to the races. Yeah, and yeah. you guys have had a busy two years. You're, I mean, you're always prolific, always performing. Mm. But go back to that moment where you know you heard your song "Past Life" uh, played in the Adam Sandler movie. You're so yeah. not invited to my uh, bar mitzvah because you, you made a funny video. You're sitting on the couch, mm. and you're like, "What?" Is that our song? Yeah, we, well, we met Adam mm -hmm. Sandler last year when he was filming in Toronto. Yeah. And he invited us to set, and we got to watch them film that movie. 
And, and then about two weeks later, they reached out saying they'd love our song to wow. be in it. But when that happens, you don't know where it's going to be in the movie, course, if it's going to be right. sort of distantly in the background. But it's in the, the most pivotal scene in the entire movie. Like a montage, right? Yeah, well, yeah. she's sort of like seeing her, no, spoiler alert, best <laughs> friend um, kiss another boy. And oh. uh, yeah, but it's cool because Will Forte is in the music video. For past oh, really? life, wow. so there's an SNL yeah. connection. But that's, that's pretty song, cool. Somehow, yeah, it's cool. Very cool. Yeah. Excellent. So, and, and with Laundry Pile, you're doing some cool pop-ups. The band, yeah, uh, at laundromats. Uh, I'm yeah, we were about trying this. to think about an interesting way to launch the album. And there's a laundromat down the street from yeah. where I live on Ossington, and it's about two blocks from where we recorded the record. So we kind of wanted to keep it in the neighborhood. And basically, fans can show up, and the band is going to be waiting to perform for them. And we're going to get small groups through, like 10 to 15 people at a time. Uh -huh. We're gonna have a laundry basket with ten song, wow. ten T-shirts in it. Okay. Each one's gonna have a different song title. Yeah. yeah. The T-shirt that we we choose will be the song we play. Yeah. And then people can leave with a vinyl. Okay, That's so cool. how do in people, and out real quick. How do people find out? Because I know you're doing it in Toronto yeah. today, and then Hamilton. Yeah, it starts so. at uh, 2 p.m. today. Okay. Uh, you're not gonna say where or no, no, 180 oh. Ossington. Oh, 180 okay. Ossington. 180 Ossington. Yeah, come. It's just south <laughs> okay. of Dundas, and okay. then uh, and then in Hamilton on uh, Friday okay. on Main Street East. Very give, exciting. Really quickly, Max. Laundry tips. Yeah. You've done an album about laundry pile. I see you got tied on your hat, not bounce, not sunlight. No, I can, that's kind of what I want to talk about. Um, <laughs> that's <good. laughs> Because often a lot of brands will reach out saying, like, uh -huh. we have a campaign. We want you to, uh -huh. to do the rounds. They want you to come on CP24 right. and talk about it. And, and I think, uh, what am I wearing right now? That's Tide. 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 Yeah. Tide reached out a couple years ago when they saw me wearing this hat saying, can you do this? And we said, no, we, we're not corporate shills. Um, <laughs> and so now you are. this is a, not a paid advertisement, but uh -huh. Tide, if you're watching, we will take your money. Uh, oh, there you in, go. Retroactively. Right. <laughs> Retroactive. Yeah. Smart move. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 Okay, so the album drops tomorrow. Arkells, Max, thank you so much thank for joining you. us. Good luck with everything. Great to see Great you job. again. Enjoy the rest of the songs. You know, yeah, thank you very much. Yummy, 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 fruit salad. Fruit salad. Yummy, yummy. Fruit okay, salad. Okay, ready, steady, yummy, wiggle. Yummy. The Wiggles are coming to Toronto next fruit month. And coming up later in the program, right yummy, around Milestones, yummy. you're going to find out a little more about how you can win a prize fruit pack salad. to take your family to check out the Wiggles as they sort of descend on Toronto yet again. We've got a whole team of the Wiggles here this morning. This is pretty exciting stuff. I can tell you my uh, eldest daughter, who's uh, turning 19 next month, we watch the Wiggles like crazy. And I went to a couple of shows. I mean, it's, it's so much fun. So the kids are going to love this. In the meantime, so let's talk to some of the newer members of the Wiggles. Starting with Lucia over here. Uh, Lucia, yes. congratulations on being part of the Wiggles. Thank it's got to be pretty exciting here. Tell us about what fans can expect at this upcoming show now. Um, lots of fun. A lot of OG Wiggle songs as mm. well. Sorry, I'm very sick of that. Hello, no, no, okay. And a croaky voice. And a croaky voice, yeah. but a yeah. lot of OG Wiggle songs as well. A lot of new songs as well. We've got Bubbles the Mermaid as well. We've got Henry the Octopus, Dorothy the Dinosaur, Wags the Dog. We've got a lot of fun expected. Okay, well, there's, there's always some of the Wiggles, isn't it? So hi. And, and let's talk about, you know, your role in the Wiggles here. And what's it like for you to be part of the Wiggles and to be part of this sort of traveling ensemble of people bringing so much sort of fun and entertainment to children? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. Um, I'm 17, so I grew up with the Wiggles, so it's right. pretty cool okay. now yeah. that I am a Wiggle. Yeah. And it's amazing. Such a great group to tour with. And we get to see so many amazing families. And I love coming to Canada. So. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> you know, Sahai is a yeah. five-time world champion salsa dancer. And right. we're learning, so we're learning salsa from Sahai, but we're yeah. also learning how to say things like Slay. Slay. I know, she, she sort of said that to me a couple sink, of times. Yeah. You know, so we're, yeah. we're, we're really... <laughs> Is that going to be like the next iteration of a Wiggles yeah. song? You know, yeah. some Slay yeah. and Sick lyrics in there? Yeah. 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 Exactly. So what's it like for you, Simon? You know, you've been around the Wiggles for a while now yeah. and, and sort of seeing the evolution of the group, you know, it's kind of, kind of from four members and sort of the sort of uh, associate members to like this incredible expanded group now. Look, it has been amazing. The energy around the Wiggles and, and the youth and the exuberance is absolutely incredible. Of course, led by Anthony, the old guys in the corner here, <laughs> Captain Feathersword and Anthony. <laughs> leading the way, but this uh, the Wiggle Show these days is is so much fun. It's energetic. It's the children singing, dancing. We just have an absolute ball. It's amazing. And, and what about your salsa influence here that you're bringing to the rest of the group here? Like, what's that been like to be able to introduce something to such a successful group already? Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's pretty amazing. Oh, I think there's music, so they asked me to try. Sure. Ready? That's yes. it. Yeah. 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 You're gonna see the shops. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and Lucia, like, what have, what have you brought to the team yourself? Like, what, what are you sort of contributing? I mean, obviously, you're a great dancer, a great voice, etc. but what is it that you feel like you're bringing? Um, well, I've been dancing That's since nice. I was four years old, and I've been in the Wiggles since I was probably two months old. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think I bring a kind of softness. <laughs> um, yeah. And also, I've, I've been dancing with them for so long that it's kind of become a part of me, and it's very easy to just join in, so... Yeah. <laughs> okay, amazing. And, and John, I've got you here as well. I'm going to put you on the spot. People Magazine <laughs> had an article about you as being the hot wiggle. What's, what's that like to sort of have that mantra and title? <laughs> the hot wiggle in the same sense as it doesn't really make sense, the hot wiggle, because there are plenty of hot wiggles here. Oh, John, <laughs> stop it. But you know, it's, it's the algorithm that's really throwing it, those videos to <laughs> certain, certain audiences. And, and I think, you know, but you're not going to reject the algorithm. Yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, it's not yeah. You need to do yeah. a bit of that break dancing. Yeah, yeah. 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 break you. dancing, let's see it, okay. Go, Johnny. Oh, oh, pop it and lock it. Yeah. Oh, I'm really, I, like, that's, I'm a terrible, terrible dancer, right? I mean, we're going to leave John the hot one to do that. Okay, so, and Anthony, you've got a mic in front of you there, so yep. let, let's talk about this. You know, you're one of the OGs. This group, the success you've had over the years, did you ever, okay. ever think about this 20, 30 years ago when you started this whole Absolutely project? Not, mate, but I'll tell you what, we've got a documentary coming out, and it's, it's going to be on uh, one of the channels. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Can't say yet. I have no <laughs> idea, but it just okay. it, it shows the 33 years yeah. of the Wiggles, and, and it's been amazing. We, we were just early childhood teachers, yeah. and that's what at the core of the Wiggles. Yeah. And of course, this young man here who oh, yeah. has yeah, got his magic buttons, swords, he can yeah. do anything. Look at this. Press the button, here's Mick Jagger. <gasps> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, where, where is the feather sword? <laughs> like, what, what, like, what's I mean, happened today? It got lost in transit. No, We're just okay. Waiting for it to catch up. Right, it's, okay. Yeah. All right. I hope you've got an air tag on it or something. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. All the time, right. So. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, listen, this is amazing. We're going to get the Wiggles to perform one more time here. And again, a reminder to our audience uh, coming up later on around Milestones, you get a chance to win a prize pack to some of the shows uh, around the GTA. So take it away, Wiggles. So great to talk to all of you. What are we playing, Anthony? Uh, do the propeller. It's one of the new songs. Okay, I don't well, know this one, but let's watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. the shows inside of the workspace. I realized at the beginning there was nothing that we wouldn't do or play. There was no script. There was no direction. There was nothing like this in the world. The very first time I walked into the building, it hit me like I need to be here. I was this kid who was this huge fan. Now I'm here, now I'm a part of it. It's just I'm talking about it right now because me goes bumps. It was live TV, and as soon as that shot was over, it was halfway to oh Mars. All right, 299 Queen Street West, the much music experience. It's a look at the musical history, <clears throat> excuse me, for these hallowed halls that we are now sitting in. Mm -hmm. And a brand new documentary so that was featured at the South by Southwest Festival digs deep to unearth many of the tales, memories, and even some secrets about 299 Queen Street West. So joining us live now in the studio for a look at this documentary and the Much Music Tour is Monica Deal, original host of Monica Deal and host of Facts. Monica, thanks so much for joining us. It's such an honor to meet you. I mean, I watched you uh, 
host Electric Circus. This was a time when VJs, you weren't given scripts, were, were rock stars, essentially. Talk about this documentary. <laughs> no, it truly, truly, like everyone knew your name. Yeah. This is going across Canada for a reason, 13 cities across Canada, because it was just so monumental. You know, I think that much music was influential um, in ways that are still, there's a ripple effect. Um, like when Drake walks around wearing an electric circus t-shirt, mm -hmm. you know, you know, something <laughs> was influential there. But no, I think what uh, people don't realize now when you have the internet and everything is so sliced up is that to uh, an entire generation, maybe a couple of generations, um, much music was sort of a star system for Canada. It actually created a star system. And that was very much the doing of Moses Neimer. I don't think he gets enough credit for what he actually, he was a genius. He is a genius. And um, basically, until much music came along, Canadians didn't celebrate Canadians. You know, people like Brian Adams, Celine Dion, they were there because they, they were mandated to be there, to have a presence. And much, created a star system. And I think that's the biggest after effect. Mm -hmm. The fact that it was all live, I tell you guys, is insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really, oh, I look back now and I just say, how did we do that? And we have producers from MTV, from CBS, from ABC. Everybody came here to sort of try to figure out how we did it. Yeah. And um, it was magic, actually. It was really magical. Wow. Do, you, do you think about that a lot? Do you reflect on that, or was it the documentary that kind of brought you back? Or, I mean, when you walk through the doors just now to 299, I don't know the last time you were back here, but how often do you think back to your experiences, your days here? I mean, you know, to be honest, I don't live in the past. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's not like I think about it all the time. Right. or think about, But um, every so often, something happens in music you know, or in sort of the pop culture scene where I go, wow, yeah, we would have been all over that. Mm -hmm. Like it was cool that on Facts, we broke that Kurt Cobain uh, committed suicide, yeah. that Freddie Mercury has died, that Michael Jackson is involved in a very uh, nasty mm -hmm. lawsuit. Um, because for us, we were fans. So this wasn't sort of the distant, we're talking about war and a different, these are people who uh, we had an emotional connection with as fans. And had been here. Yeah, and who had been yeah. walking through our halls yeah. and who you have these relationships with. I mean, they're not friendships, you know, it's work. We're all doing work. But um, as fans, we, you know, breaking those stories was like, wow, mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm saying this. Yeah, I bet. That Kurt Cobain is gone. Yeah. All right, so you really yeah. have to know your stuff and be a fan because that's how you're truly in it. Monica, how did you come to get your job, which sounds like kind of winning the lottery for everyone who is part of this empire? <laughs> yeah, you know what? It was a complete fluke, and it yeah. was very much the Moses Neimer live the life. Uh -huh. uh, I went to university in Winnipeg. I got a job as a club DJ. That was my first job. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, then I started a band. I had a, a bar. Well, I had a band in high school. I had a band in university. I had a bar band that I took on the road. Came to Toronto to try to get a publishing deal because I was going to be the first Indian rock star. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. But uh, I got offered a job here, and it just fit. Like for the first time in my life, when I walked in these in this in this building, I thought. Wow, I've never had a sense of belonging. I'm mm. an immigrant kid, born in India, always the outcast, always the outsider. I relate to the outsiders. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that's why Electric Circus worked. Mm. Because people could tell I was one of them. Mm. Yeah. I was just kind of faking <laughs> this. Oh, here I am, the ring master of the circus. Oh, I remember watching so, this. Oh, that, okay, that's yeah. a 70s themed show. Can, <laughs> wow. we, just, right, can right. we just clarify <laughs> the little Headband thing disco. going on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was very disco. That was a theme show. Not quite sure. Okay, peeps. We had Destiny's Child on. We had uh, Queen Latifah and TLC and um, you know Aqua, amazing huge acts. Yes. And uh, and no, we're running footage of me with a headband on from right. the seventies. Okay, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. That's what we found in the archives, Monica. And you said you wanted to be a rock star. I mean, you kind of turned into a rock star in terms of the performance side of 
the news and the much music and things along those lines. Let's talk about the documentary now. When yes. you watched it, what went through your mind? What did okay. you see? And what did you want to hear something? Mm -hmm. None of us have seen it. You haven't Why? seen it? No, none of us. Have, so it's tonight, tonight, tonight at, really? at Roy oh Thompson God. Hall. Yeah. I think there are just a scattering of tickets left, so get yeah. them now if you want to. I didn't the coolest thing about tonight is it's called 299 Queen Street oh, West. It's all about the much experience. Yeah. And, um, we were interviewed. I have not seen it. None of us have seen it. Oh, we're all going to watch it for the first time with the audience. And uh, the filmmaker, Sean Menard, he actually had access to all the archives, which no one's had oh, before. Yeah. So we're also going, what did he end up using? Oh, what did he find in the archives? <laughs> we're a little nervous. I think we're all a little bit like, oh, God, I hope, you know. Hope it hope it all kind of works, but I think it will. I yeah. think it's definitely going to be uh, a moment and a half. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that we're all going to be together for the first time in a very mm -hmm. long time yeah. um, is really something. And I think people are going to have really natural, maybe emotional, maybe in some cases raw reactions mm -hmm. to what Sean puts up on that screen. Yeah. Wow! And then we have an intimate and interactive with I all know. the much music VJs. Yeah. Uh, so that should be interesting because especially tonight you're going to get just a raw right. reaction. Wow. Then it goes across the country because you know what? I'm from Bozager, Manitoba yeah. and Winnipeg. I live in Vancouver now. I lived here for 10 years. Sorry guys, Toronto is not the center of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. so uh, it's going to go across the country yeah. because much was very much across the country. Canadian, the Canadian across music the country it really brought was. everyone together. Mm -hmm. right. Wow. So, yeah. Oh my gosh, Monica, such an honor. Thank you so much you know, for I joining can't us. Thank you guys enough. Thank no, you. that's no, really. like so, so special. That's kind of this once in a lifetime. Thanks so Monica, much. Monica, thanks so much. Oh Appreciate this. Gosh. All right, so the I can't two wait to see you. Very much.